deadly poisonous snakes, handled with as much respect as a waiter ladling out spaghetti. The way of life in the square of the dead, Gemma Alfna in Marrakesh, Morocco, the city Sir Winston Churchill loved to paint. The mystic business of mystifying snakes must be one of the strangest tourist attractions in the world. But there's no tongue-in-cheek about this ritual in a land where ritual and ceremony are part of everyone's living. Certainly the royal guard outside the king's palace in the capital city, Rabat. Ceremony, though always decorative, moves with the times, as does King Hassan himself, Morocco's constitutional monarch. Hassan and the young crown prince are close to the people, especially on this their national day, a time to take stock and announce new policies. The weighty business of making a nation's living is a heavy burden for a modern monarch. Others make their way along more traditional paths. Taking a nation from the Middle Ages into the 20th century is a question of knowing what best to preserve. The filigree carving of the great city gates is a style that survives unaided, as do the medieval bastions. And certainly, the storks adding their own touch to traditional Arabic architecture. Traditions are handed on to the illiterate by those who make their living by telling stories. Myths, legends and heroic tales are passed down, with interruptions for the equally ceremonial taking of mint tea. Gemma Elfna is a fairgrounds come music hall where the preservationists are more energetic. These tumblers start at three years old. They call Marrakesh the Pearl of the South, Morocco's gateway to the mountains and to the Sahara. If you want to collect a caravan and trek across the desert, this is where you start, the Thursday morning camel market. Bargaining can be hard. A good working camel's worth more than a Cadillac to caravan traders and to farmers who use them for plowing the rich agricultural land northeast of here. Most Muslims don't drink alcohol, but wherever men meet and get thirsty with all that money talk, the water sellers are there too, with their goatskin bags. Hard bargaining for camel connoisseurs is a backcloth for those making another kind of living. And of course it's a must on every tourist's itinerary. If climbing onto a camel isn't authentic enough, you can always don tarbush and jalaba and take your chance at choosing one of the best out of Morocco's population of more than a million, mules and asses. For those who can't afford a camel, a burro is the only means of transport, the all-purpose beast of burden that brings produce from the country to the bazaars of Marrakesh, Fez and the other imperial cities. It may bring hardwood for the butt of a hand-carved antique rifle, antique even though it's made right here on the spot. The craftsmanship, learned early, is as old as firearms. The inlaid brass has come from some other old gun, and there's nothing new about the sales technique or the satisfaction of carrying home the genuine Moroccan tribesman's rifle. Next to agriculture, tourism, epitomized by the color-splashed bazaars, is the major currency-earning industry. But Morocco's most famous export is live horse flesh. Here, in what could almost be an English country setting, they breed that most cultivated and influential of animals, the Arab.
Not far from the great walled city of Meknes is the Ara Marokan, the state-financed stud, a nationalized industry that best illustrates Morocco's desire to keep the best of the old and make it pay. Keeping the past profitably alive is something worth cultivating. And if you have the skill to ride an Arab stallion, the courage to trust your handmade antique rifle, and nerve something like steel, you can join the Berber tribesmen in their unique way of celebrating anything from the king's accession, a well-made marriage match, or a fine wine grape harvest. This is no stagey desert song fantasy, but a fantasia, Morocco's version of a medieval jousting tournament.